Hey there. So I'm walking into town and I got here a list of topics taken from an, a message a guy sent to me. And he came here like well over 10 years ago, maybe 12 or who knows how many years ago. He came with his wife and uh, we're a little different in some philosophies, but similar as well. He was a, a really nice guest to have here. And I hope that uh, it was a great experience for him. He learned a lot and saw some different perspectives. But uh, like many people, he sees that I'm struggling and he wants to offer me some advice. And the topics he brought up were interesting enough for me to, to want to make a big response. But if I just write a big response, it's not as useful. You know, it goes to one person. If I make this video, then you can look at the ideas and how I think about things and, and, and stuff. And it might be useful to you. Because I have had a lot of guests who say, I want to make a place like that. In fact, it's becoming increasingly common to say, I want to get land with some friends and we're going to go off and live, you know, more uh, in a sustainable way and stuff like that. So I want to help those people. This video is hopefully to help you. And it has to do with the number one issue, which is income. You can't do shit without money. I, I see questions online like, how do I get land for free? You know, and, and will someone give me land to make an animal sanctuary? And just all this stuff. And it's like, no, if you don't have money, you can't do shit. <laughs> That's how it is. So figure out what your skills are and then monetize those. Now, I did that in the past. I worked in corporations and stuff. I'm a really smart guy who can think in some unique ways. And so corporations have rented my brain to do that. And that's a good thing. Well, number one idea he, he mentioned. A Substack newsletter. He makes money off of his newsletter. He makes more money off of his newsletter than I live on. And for him, that's just a side thing. And I have really great content. I currently give it all away for free. I assume Substack is monetized in some way. And that's cool. Uh, in general, I want to give all my information away for free. However, I'm dying here. And it would not be necessarily bad to have a paying outlet for my thoughts. I've already written a lot. I can transfer a lot of information over from that and organize it better. Because if I'm getting paid, then I want to up my game and do a better job. So I think that's a great idea. Um, I don't know anything about Substack. I don't know if there's feedback on it you get from people. But, you know, I like to be in conversation with people. And I could take all my past videos and I could publish them there and uh, all my past writings. So great idea, thank you, very smart. Uh, second idea, rent out cabins. And my initial reaction to that is no way. He mentions that again later. Hosting tourists, glamping, it's a very common thing. Uh, first, no. <laughs> I've already thought about this over and over. So uh, I'll tell you my reasoning, though, and that is because I don't want random people getting near me. I'm fairly misanthropic. I've been abused by a certain number of people, and I just do not want to deal with the public. Uh, there are ways, however, that I could say yes. And that is if I had a system that I was using that would filter people better. You know, like Couchsurfing has some minimal... Uh, reputation management, but the kind of people on couch surfing want to stay everywhere for free. I don't want to host them for free. Like even on my couch surfing profile, it says I don't host people for one of the most popular events around here uh, because I get like 30 to 40 people contact me. I think it was less last year um, saying they want to stay for two nights. They're not interested in my project. They don't share any values with me. They're just tourists looking for a free place to stay. Now, if you want to, you can go host 30 or 40 people for free. I don't want to. But he's not suggesting that. He's suggesting charging them. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, after I say no, I should try and see if I can get to yes. Because as he suggested in his note, I could have other people manage it. And that would get me out of the picture. That starts to sound better. And uh, I could charge not the tiniest amount that people always offer me, 
but I could charge a larger amount and I'd only be dealing with people then who are paying a reasonable amount. I don't want to be the cheapest fucking place to stay. I have an amazing place in nature that I protect, that I curate, that I, I uh, improve. And, you know, I've put decades of my life into this now. And so I don't want to just be taken advantage of by people who want to pay $5 a night to stay somewhere. They're also probably not the better kind of people. If they want to take advantage in one way, they probably want to take advantage in others. And I have known some sociopaths. So to get from no to yes would require for me a substantial investment in infrastructure. And that is to set up parts of the land that currently are not available for people to stay in. And this could be transitional, right? I could do it for a while, invest in my place, and then go after what I really want. So it doesn't have to be like for the rest of my life I'm some slave to tourism. Also, I don't like short-term tourism. So, you know, building houses that were fully on solar, have composting toilets, have rain capture, uh, and somebody else managing it, and they would profit, of course, you know, and they would get to live there. Um, that would be great. And I have builders set up who could build it. Um, I could set up just glamping places, but tents don't last forever. And I really like the idea of building things long term. But again, if I'm thinking transitionally, it could be there's a stage in which I go for glamping, you know, and be all right. And uh, built correctly or set up correctly, I could actually do glamping all year long. A little chilly in the winter, but it doesn't snow. So it's possible. Uh, he brings up the Enneagram and mentions my Enneagram number, which is terrible because that means he knows my birthday. And I don't tell people my birthday. They don't need to know it. In fact, I would suggest to you never tell people your birthday. I mean, that's a banking question, right? So nobody needs to know your birthday. I lie to people now, especially if they ask me my birthday because they want to evaluate me in some pseudo-spiritual way for the Enneagram or for astrology or for human design. Uh, and, and I like this guy. I'm sorry, dude. I mean, I'm going to send you a link to this video, obviously. But uh, I have no faith in made-up shit. And the Enneagram is made up. I'm not going to get into uh, astrology from other parts of the world. I see no reason to get into it from Europe, the Europe-style one. Uh, human design is more new. And I think it, it comes out of people's desperation to have a sense of identity, to know who they are. But even worse, it comes out of people trying to tell other people who the hell they are and control them and so i don't want to hear oh you're this therefore you must do this you're this kind of person no i'm not i'm a really mixed strange dude and my birth date is pretty much irrelevant the position of the planets when you're born or anything else does not matter so i reject that thank you still for the note you're a nice guy uh, you know, try to be nice folks. I have noticed that sometimes I lie about my birthday and when I'm asked, and people will still tell me then who I am. There's no check on it to see if it makes any sense. They'll just decide, oh, yeah, now I know who you are, and I'm going to tell you what to do. And I lied, so I just sit there. I don't say anything. I just chuckle in my head because they're full of shit. Uh, four. Become an influencer. YouTube, TikTok. Well, I'm kind of trying to do that. Uh, in a sense, I'm trying to influence people philosophically, etc. Now, I haven't tried to really monetize that. And I, I, that is something I need to do. Um, this channel is not yet big enough to be monetized. Well, depending on which one you're seeing it on, I have more than one. And... Uh, Monetizing doesn't change the user experience, so I'm not hiding information from people, so that doesn't bother me. Um, I do want to get sponsors, very much so. I want to have sponsors who uh, I, I like their product, who I think their product actually makes a better world. I will not just have as a sponsor some product that's willing to pay me, but I don't agree with philosophically. So there's issues there. Um, Write a book? Yeah. 
I mean, I've written far more than one book's worth of stuff. And uh, all I need to do there is decide a couple books that I would write and that were agreeable. Now, do I then sell that? Well, I could sell it at cost. And, and if people are just buying the virtual version to read on their Kindle, then at cost could be very, very low, like a buck or something, whatever Amazon requires as the minimum. And I wouldn't get a damn cent. On the other hand, I got to survive. And so I could still have all my information out there for free on the web in little pieces that were relevant, broken up. But if somebody wants a coherent vision in a book form that is all tied together and you know, edited heavily and uh, draws on other sources better, quotes people that are relevant, includes their designs. If I have permission, you know, I could contact them and get permission. Then I could actually write, for example, I mean, after 20 years off the grid and having grown up with a survivalist kind of father and not coming from any one particular philosophical point of view, but able to mix all of them, I think I could write an amazing book that would really take people from the confusion state they're in of not knowing how to escape the system into getting as far away from centralized systems as possible. And that's dangerous because it would draw attention to me. Uh, you know, some of it would threaten the powers that be. But I'm also nobody, which is a good defense. I'm not important. I'm not really very dangerous. My ideas are very dangerous. So that's not a bad idea at all. And I think that's kind of a no-brainer. And, you know, if I did tack on some extra bucks onto it so I can survive and continue, I don't think that really violates my ethics much. You know, I have this rule that information should be free, but also I should try and stay alive long enough to, to gather and, and improve information and, and uh, deliver it. So I don't know. And it would totally get my messages out there. And it would also, you know, anything I do like that recruits for people to come join me just as, you know, videos do if I ever, you know, stop sounding like an asshole who hates people, which I'd like to, you know, not be somebody who hates people, but that would imply I have people near me who I don't hate. And hate's too strong a word. I just, I don't want to have the same fucking conversations over and over about the same dumbass shit from people who don't know shit and want to tell me what to do. I just, I don't like it, you know? Uh, like maybe I want to collect people who, who, who study like nonviolent communication because if they don't, they're fucking assholes. That's a joke, maybe. Radical Honesty, another good book. Maybe there's more than one, I don't know. But uh, that can be done in a way that's actually positive. You don't have to be an asshole just because you're honest. And you probably don't have to say every goddamn thing you think. Because uh, that's not very helpful or good necessarily. So yeah, writing books is good. Uh, here's one that most people don't mention, but is a really good one. And that is to make a distillery. Now, uh, he mentions making tequila. I don't have blue agave. And tequila is a number de denomination or something it's a it's like champagne you can only call yourself champagne if you produce your product in champagne france tequila is only allowed to be produced in tequila mexico and that state jalisco and some other states as well the government it's a government-owned term so i can't make anything like that i uh i do plant agaves and i could make other products and uh that is an option and also i could get a column still which are way more efficient. The copper ones are fine. I could get one of those too. I could have it be wood fired. I actually want to build, and I think I forgot this in my video about it. One of the projects I want to do with an evacuated tube solar hot water heater is to build a still with that energy. And that would work. I'm pretty darn certain. And you have temperature controls on it so that you get it at a certain temperature and you boil off the bad alcohols right and you collect those and use them for some industrial shit and then you uh then you take it to a higher temperature and you boil off the alcohols you collect those and that's your product and i could i could do that i could make a mezcal and with that same still i could ferment anything else i can get my hands on 
I mean, vodka is made from potatoes. And potatoes grow around here pretty well. I could grow potatoes. One of my other weird projects I want to do is collect the many kinds of potatoes there are. Because there's like over 30 kinds of potatoes. So I could make a potato collection place. You know, collect them like a genetic collection. That fits right in with my goals. And then some of those I could, you know, buy or grow uh, potatoes to ferment and make a vodka. Uh, I don't know what else I, I can ferment around here. I can think of other sugary things. Now, in those cases, though, it's starches. And you do things to turn the starches into sugars. Uh, so, I think the agave is actually a type of sugar in there. It's really, there's a sweet stuff. Agua miel? I don't know. But I have made poke before, just right out of the plant. And I want to make a super poke, actually. That would be doable. I could make a super poke, and I could even distill that or just sell it as super poke. Um, that would be great. The other option for me is to do a brand deal with an existing distillery, and there's one near here, where I come up with a name, I stick my face on it, I promote it, and these folks don't know a ton about promoting. Not that I'm an expert, but that'd be really fun. And uh, I have ideas thought up and better labels because their labels are boring. So yeah, crazy idea. Long-term survival also, when, the, when civilization collapses, alcohol is a great form of uh, money. It's a great form of exchangeable product. It's shelf stable. I've already been saving jars for years and everybody should be saving their jars anyway. Jars are very valuable in the form they're in. If they have a top, it's better. But if they don't have a top, you can, we can make those, figure them out somehow. Find a, something that works like a cork wax them on there use pine resin something and uh oh shit there's big puddles up here perfect for slipping in i won't slip i'm very careful shouldn't say that you might watch me slip so anyway great idea um and especially for the post-apocalyptic solar punk future um you have this shelf stable product that you would make it as high proof as possible so you transport more of it easier because all products are going to get harder to transport. This is why I'm into food forest farming. I want everybody around here to do food forest farming. You should want that where you live or you should move. If you don't live where the food is, you're going to die. Or your children will. God damn it, god damn it. There we go. All right. The last one he mentioned was a pizza and ice cream place. And he mentioned a friend of his somewhere had one of those. And... Uh, that's a cool idea. It could work to serve anybody on site, but I don't really want to sell to the public. I don't want to do that. I don't want the public arriving to where I live. And so that would require it to be in town. Now, the cool thing is that I could set up a solar pizza oven. And one of my projects is to make a solar oven uh, using, again, the evacuated tube solar hot water heaters. God, that's a long thing to say. And uh, so, yeah, uh, inside a community, if there ever is one, that'd be great. And then outside in a town where there's enough market. Because even in the town nearest me, there's not enough market to support that at all. People show up on motorbikes and they sell ice cream out of those. Um, there is no pizza up here. Well, the next town over does have pizza. And part of, the, part of the coolness of it would be the solar poweredness of it. And you could even set up a mobile one, which means you wouldn't even have to own a location. So I could have a pickup truck with a solar hot water heater in it and, a, and an oven. We could mix the dough the early morning or the night before, so it's all rising. And then we have all of our ingredients there and people can watch us prep them. And we start putting pizzas in. And then we have a smaller solar power thing that keeps them warm. So people can buy it by the slice, right? But it's better if you sell it by the whole pizza. Do I need a box? I guess so, I need pizza boxes. Ice cream, I can have solar created ice cream. It's, it's a crazy idea, but it would also be neat because it would be nice to go out into communities. It's not quite in tune with my wanting to hide out in the forest idea, but you know, not everybody wants to hide out in the forest. And so very carefully, I could have systems that go out and do other things. That would be one of them. 
So, uh, that's it, I guess. And thank you for the note. I hope the others of you who, who uh, are listening to this get ideas for how you can survive what you can do. Well, these dogs are guarding their land against the scary, scary person that I am. I'm here to invade. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, so good luck with it. Good luck to you, and thank you again, dude. Great thoughts, and that's my thoughts. Bye.